Pleased to be joined now by Bills linebacker, special teams ace Tyler Matikavich. And Tyler's appearance is part of our fresh off the field player interview segment that's brought to you by Austin Air, the official clean air provider of the Buffalo Bills. Tyler, I got to ask you, do you still go by the Mike Tomlin given nickname of Dirty Red? Is that still alive and well or have we moved on from that? Uh, no, it's definitely still alive and well. I feel I find more guys around here call me Dirty Red now, so uh, <laughs> it's pretty cool. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, let's let's yeah, be, well, go ahead, Steve. Well, I was gonna. You had a, a you know got a chance to get on in a in a game like the way it went last week against Houston. You got a chance to play some reps at linebacker and and. I know how I used to feel when I'd get in on regular down and distance plays after coming off the special teams and spending all my time covering kicks. How, you know, just tell how fun was it to be able to get out, take some reps and run around the field and, and think about tackling guys in coverage rather than just, you know, finding a kick in the air and chasing a guy. Yeah, no, it, it's awesome. You know, I uh, just have an opportunity to go out there and just run around getting some defensive snaps. I mean, uh, there's nothing better than that. You know, uh, it's definitely not how I thought the day was going to start, you know, but, uh, I mean, I'll take every one of them I can get. So I definitely enjoy them anytime they come around. So, and you get to throw a pick in your stat column as well. What did you kind of see on that play late? I know Davis Mills was probably seeing ghosts by that point in the game, but still in all, it, that one counts for you just like any other one does. Yeah, no, I was definitely fired up. Uh, that was the first one of the career. So, uh, I mean, it might not mean a lot to some people, but that, that one right there meant everything to me. Uh, so I was pretty fired up about that. Give us a sense now as you come back, you bounce off a big win last week, no question. You're looking forward to it, and you got this team with that has a target on its back by every other team. And you're one of the you're one of thirty one other teams that put a target right on squarely on the back of the Chiefs. Uh they put you out of the playoffs last year. It's a big game. Um, you know, you guys are playing well now. You're going into their building, all the baggage that comes with this game. Give us an idea about what the vibe is and what you guys are talking about in the locker room. Yeah, I mean, shoot, everyone's fired up, you know. Uh, I mean, it, it, it's you know how it is. I mean, it's hard for us just to say it's a, it's another game. It's one game at a time, but everyone knows who, who we're playing this weekend, you know. And, uh, I mean, we're excited. Uh, I mean, unfortunately, we came up short two times last year, you know, and, and that last one definitely stung a little extra. Uh, I know a lot of guys still have that, uh, that feeling that they had from last year uh, when we played them in the AFC Championship. But, uh, I mean, guys are just hungry. You know, you could, you could definitely feel that today around practice. Guys flying around, you know, really guys being on their P's and Q's. And uh, it's going to take everybody on this team to, to get a W this weekend. I know when we were talking to Coach earlier this week, you know, everybody talks naturally about their offense and how they're like a track team on a football field. Some of those track guys are also returning the kicks and the punts. Uh, what do you, what do you, what's kind of your, your feel on Mecole Hardman and uh, Byron Pringle, who are usually doing the returns for those guys? Yeah, no, they're good. They're good returners back there. Uh, they're definitely fast guys. You know, they they get downhill, they hit it. Uh, they really want to get to that big field and, and get you moving lateral. Then they they find their little alley and they hit it. Uh, so it's really just going to take all, all our covered lanes. You know, everyone don't follow the same color. Really good spacing. Uh, and we got to try to change the game. You know, we uh, we were able to get a fumble recovery uh, last year in the AFC Championship. You know, yep. uh, and we're going to need another big splash play like that to uh, help our team win and. Uh, really just pin them deep every every opportunity we get. Give uh, Bills fans and, and people listening a, an idea about who the core guys are on their special teams for the for the Chiefs. I mean, we know you. Uh, we know uh, Taiwan Jones and the guys for the Bills. Who are the guys that you guys know uh, that you're going to be, you know, battling with play after play, the core special teams guys for the Chiefs? Do you have a handle on who those guys are? Oh, yeah. Uh, we, definitely, we definitely have our, our hands full. You know what I mean, Steve? Uh, I mean, they got a lot of guys that are just playing with speed. You know, a lot of effort guys. They don't they don't stop till the till the whistle's blown. You know, you might uh, be screaming pre-snap, "Hey, this guy's holding me!" But you already know at the beginning of the week these guys are gonna hold you. You know, so <laughs> you got to be ready to use all your tools, use your hands. Uh, we're gonna be playing with so much energy this weekend. Uh, we really it's just gonna be us versus them. We we say it all, every week. You know, you got to win your pods, win your one on one. Doesn't matter who you're going up against whatever guy, whatever numbers across from you, you just got to dominate him one play at a time. And, uh, I mean, I really, I, I can't, I can't lie. I'm so excited for this opportunity this weekend with these guys fly around. I know guys are hungry. 
uh, just like myself. And uh, I mean, I'm just really excited to see all 11 of us on, on teams out there running around, flying around, trying to make some plays. Adversity when you face an opponent of this caliber is something you almost anticipate, so you're prepared to handle it. Um, your special teams unit has already faced a little bit of adversity through the first four weeks. But my question to you is, how has Coach Farwell been in the room coming off of maybe those instances, whether it's reviewing film or getting ready for the next week after those couple of hiccups you had early in the season on special teams? Yeah, you know, uh, we just come right back in here the next day and, uh, and we get those things corrected. You know, we, we consistently have uh, conversations, uh, even if it's just walking up, walking from meeting to meeting. You know, we're just always consistently trying to figure out what we're going to do this weekend, what our matchups are, if we like our matchups, uh, what we're seeing, what could work, what might not work, you know. Uh, and those are just conversations that uh, are awesome that we're always having, you know. And he, I think he does an excellent job at that, at really trying to be transparent with us, tell us what we're going to do, but then at the same time just being like, hey, what are you seeing? Do you think this could work or do you think this can't work, you know. And uh, as long as we just keep doing, having these talks, these meetings, you know, outside of our, our regular special teams meetings that we've been doing throughout the year, uh, that stuff will just help us, and we just got to keep getting better each week. You know what I mean? One one game at a time, one day at a time, and just stay on the rise. You guys had put together one of the all-time great Buffalo Bill seasons last year. It was absolutely fantastic to watch. And it, this year, you've got 17 games, not 16. You've got 18 weeks, not 17. It's going to be a grind like never before in the history of the league, right? So what what – communication what kind of thought process or you know what kind of different protocols or if any are you using do you just tack on a week at the end and kind of keep on keeping on with what you're doing and we've had brownie and i've been talking today about man oh man it's hard to play as well as you guys did on both sides of the ball this last week it's hard to play like that for three straight months what are the thoughts about that going forward and how long of a season it's going to be yeah, shoot. I mean, you know, it's already a long year as it, as it is with 16 games and then the, the playoffs and all that. So adding another one, uh, it definitely is going to be long, you know. But, uh, I mean, it's like anything. You know, you, you can't look too far down the road. You know, we know each week we just got to be good on offense, be good on defense, and be good on special teams, you know. All three phases really just playing, just making teams one-dimensional, you know. Just on defense, we got to stop the run, make them pass. On teams, we just got to be fast. And on O, we just got to score the score points. Um, but I think the big thing, too, is just making sure these guys are, are here mentally, you know, because like you said, I mean, it is a long year uh, and a lot of you're going to need everybody on this team from the vets to the young guys. So I think it's going to be really crucial to just reminding these young guys, hey, we're going to need you guys down this stretch, you know, um, and just keeping them locked in. Talking to Bill's linebacker and special teams, ace Tyler Matikiewicz here on One Bill's Live. And Tyler, um Everybody has their theories on the best way to beat the Chiefs. And I don't want to, I'm not diving into game plan with you when I ask you this. I'm asking you from an approach perspective, like a lot of outside observers, the armchair quarterbacks, if you will, say, well, when you play this team, you can't shy away from anything. You got to let it all hang out. You got to be aggressive, but not reckless. And, you know, and you, and you, I'm sure you've heard it. I mean, whether you're down at the grocery store, down the street, uh, or and people recognize you or whatever it is, everybody's got a theory. What is what is realistic though when you go into a game against a team, you know, of this caliber? You really do kind of have to have everybody pulling the rope and everybody being aggressive on every single play, right? Yeah. Um, no, you, you you definitely do. Uh, I mean, there's definitely a lot of ways people try to attack the Chiefs, you know, and uh couple of them might come up successful a lot of them they don't unfortunately you know so uh you just really got to take your plans and and just really look at it you know and look at matchups and all that stuff and just know at the end of the day it's just about all 11 guys executing i know i can't really speak for the offense but on a defense uh from defense perspective um we really just need all 11 guys just doing their job the communication has to be key you know everyone's got to be on their p's and q's with the checks uh when we're when we're in passing down situational football you know what i mean what well, all that, all that stuff that we talk about throughout the year, it's just leading us up to these points, uh, these moments like this. You know, uh, you never want to make a moment too big or too little. You know, you just got to prepare, do what you've been doing to get uh, since day one. These coaches will put a game plan to us, and it just comes down to our job going out there and executing and and just making some plays. 
you've been in this on this team for you know two seasons now. You're you're deep into your second year now with this club, and you watched them last year put together the great season they did. You and you know you saw Josh play like he did last year. You saw this offense with uh, Steph Diggs, you know, take a step. Your defense last year and and has really kind of changed this year. You went from kind of middle of the pack last year. Now you're top, you know, the top of the league. What differences, what are the most stark differences for you in this team? Because every team's different every year, right? This is a different team than it was last year. What are the big differences for you for the Buffalo Bills this year as opposed to last year, maybe on both sides of the ball? Yeah, uh, what's different is definitely, I think everyone, it, it it's it sucks getting to the AFC Championship and losing, you know, but I think that right there is 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 huge for us, you know, just guys seeing what it takes to get there, and uh, and we got there, but I mean, that's not the goal, you know, the overall goal is you want to win a championship, you want to get to the Super Bowl, you know, um, so us coming up short last year, I definitely think that that built our team in a huge way. And uh, and I know this team has had up and downs even the past couple of years, you know, before I even got here. But, I mean, just the one continuous trend on this team is just everyone's always just on the rise, you know. Uh, it, everyone's really just taking their game and, and speaking it and putting it into existence, you know. And, and I think people might laugh, you know, but I think that's a huge thing with our defense. You know, we talk about taking the ball away every single day. We talk about getting the ball out, whatever, however it is, punching the ball out, picking it off, you know, and uh, – you're seeing it transpire, you know, once we get out there in the game. So I think if we just continue to do that and uh, just keep elevating our game each weekend and week out and never get comfortable, you know what I mean, never get satisfied, uh, it's only going to keep elevating this team. Last one for you, Tyler, uh, and we'll let you go. I was very taken by Josh's comment after the game last week when he was asked about Tyler Bass. Gave him a huge compliment because the kickers are always kind of like, ah, there are these guys over here. Are they really football players? But Josh said, Tyler's a football player. Uh, Not a description that you often hear for a kicker. Um, What do you think it is that makes him, you know, such such a part of this team that has teammates thinking of him as a football player, not just a kicker? You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, I 100%. I mean, shoot, you, you guys all see him. He's out there. He's got his, he's got his one eye black <laughs> strip out there. You know, he's got his little, little swaggerness to him. But uh, I mean, shoot, every time we do tackling drills or even when we're doing kickoffs at the end of every play, you always see number two coming in like almost as if he was going to square up the return or whoever has the ball. And you're always, you always laugh, but you're just like, T-Bass, what are you doing? But that's just who he is. The kid really wants to hit somebody. Uh, and I love that about T-Bass. That's what makes T-Bass T-Bass. <laughs> All right. Well, listen, Tyler, yeah. we appreciate the time, uh, but we've run out of it. So go get yourself a shower. Make sure you're <laughs> icing up, get in the cold tub so you're ready for Sunday night. We'll be watching you out there. All right. Good luck. Appreciate you guys having me.